In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a morning. What a week. What a month. I don't know whether I'm coming or going or what I should be doing or how I'm supposed to feel or how I'm supposed to preach this morning. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've preached from my home on Palm Sunday in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Yes, it's hard to believe. This is all so new and disorienting. Every time I think I've got a grip, every time I have a plan, there's new information, a new directive, a new circumstance, and I have to adjust all over again. All the while, the losses keep piling up, and there is so much to grieve. Like many of you, I'm sad, confused, worried, and drained. Like many of you, I feel disconnected from so many of the people and places and routines of my life. And I'm sobered by the serious needs of those among us who are the most vulnerable or who don't have safe homes to shelter in place from. Like many of you, I want the same mind that was in Christ Jesus to be in me, but I don't really know what that looks like right now. Instead, I'm afraid I'm quite a mess, riding a roller coaster of emotions and moods, much to my family's chagrin. And yet, like many of you, I'm discovering all kinds of graces too, like time with my husband and three usually very busy teenagers. I'm discovering grace in their boredom and the creativity it's generating and the way it's turning us toward one another. I'm discovering grace in my newfound appreciation for things that I used to take for granted and in my newfound freedom from things and routines that I didn't think I could live without. I'm discovering grace such grace in the care and concern I've seen among you for one another and for this community and for those who are suffering right now. There is grace in the generosity and compassion that is pouring out all around us in the everyday heroism of medical professionals and staff, grocery workers, delivery people, service providers, caregivers, in the everyday sacrifices of people who are quarantining themselves voluntarily for the common good, or of elders who are quarantining themselves so carefully out of concern for the peace of mind of their worried adult children. There is grace in the resilience of young people too, and the resilience of our young people who are navigating so many disappointments right now. There's even grace in all these wonderful toilet paper memes and all this great social distance humor that you see these days. Like the one I saw recently of a man in a t-shirt with big letters on it that said, let's talk about Jesus and a bubble over his head that explains, it helps with social distance. Yes, there's grace in being able to laugh at ourselves. But what's really strange is that I feel guilty about this too. I feel guilty about recognizing grace as if there was something wrong with discovering these blessings in the midst of this collective trauma, this collective tragedy, as if there was something wrong with recognizing good in the midst of bad, as if that somehow diminished suffering or denied the great, great losses. It's a confusing jumble of emotions and experiences, isn't it? Sorrow and gratitude and fear and peace and disappointment and hope, horror and beauty, guilt and grace. But all of this, all of this we bring with us to this Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, perhaps the most confusing 
jarring, paradoxical day of the church year. We begin the morning in anticipation and joy as we proclaim our triumphant King Jesus. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But then the liturgy takes a somber turn as we turn towards Jesus' passion, toward the week when everything goes awry and our world and expectations are turned upside down. Suddenly, the crowds who proclaim this great king reject him. His friends betray and deny and abandon him. The religious and political leaders persecute him. And he's arrested, tried, convicted, humiliated, crucified. That's where the story ends, for today at least, but we know what's coming later in the week. On Thursday, we'll gather again to remember Jesus' Last Supper and his command to love one another. Then on Friday, we'll sit at the foot of the cross and bear witness to his crucifixion and to the darkness and desolation and disorientation that follows. And then, finally, on Easter morning, we'll celebrate his resurrection and all that it means for us. Sometimes, we treat these as distinct moments, unfolding neatly and orderly in some kind of sequence, both in Christ's life and in our own. And yet we can't really separate out the liturgies and moments and emotions of this day or of this holy week or of this strange time in our lives as if there were a singular right way to do them or feel them, as if each had one and only proper place, as if we didn't often experience them all at once, death and life life and death. Yes, it's messy, but so is life. So is this holy week. So are Judas and Peter and Caiaphas and Pilate and the scribes and elders and soldiers and the crowd. And so are we. Oh Lord, bless this mess. It's relatively easy to point to all the things we may be doing wrong today, just as it's relatively easy to point to all the things that people did wrong in the passion narrative. There is plenty of guilt to go around for sure, and there certainly is a place for honest, hard judgment, for facing the ways we all participate in the crucifixion of Christ and of others. But this year, perhaps because of what we're living through or fumbling our way through, perhaps because we are doing the best we know how in this strange new world, I'm drawn this year to a different gesture. The open arms of Jesus on the cross. Jesus isn't pointing fingers, though so many people are pointing fingers at him, judging him. Jesus isn't pointing fingers. Jesus is embracing it all, embracing us all from the cross. Jesus is holding all of our confusion and sorrow and fear and anger and hope, our sinfulness and goodness, guilt and grace, all of it. This year, I hear Jesus saying through the passion and on the cross, I know you and I love you and will love you to the very end. And I bless your mess. I'm with it in you. I'm in it with you. And I will bring you through with grace. Amen.